I feel like something you you mentioned in relation to insights sparked in me this idea of like female intuition and you know intuition that everyone holds but how that doesn't seem like it's really honored um as much in society as as it potentially needs to be and sometimes there is this sense of dismissal of intuition and that can sometimes seem like it goes hand in hand with the dismissal of art so art is like you were saying before something that is nice and something that is people can enjoy but it's not necessarily seen as something integral to to being and if we were to honor ourselves the artist our intuition and the expression of that what do you feel would shift in a wider context within us as individuals but also within society well there'd be a reference for art because there would be a reference to life. And at the moment, um, you know, I was, I saw that I suffered from a perception which was, oh, other things are more important. You know, there's many more urgent things. Like you got to put food on the table and have a roof on your head. And, you know, uh, people are dying, there is hunger going on, like you should be an activist. And you know, that there's so many other ways that one should contribute or what they should do. And art is a hobby, you know, art is reserved for the aristocrat, the wealthy or the crazies, you know? <laughs> um, and I think that's such a um, wrong perception that, and it's also related to distraction. I think also with the amount of distraction that exists in terms of, you know, um, the media industry of having a lot of like watching, like I think we used to have so, in a way I, I maybe it's a wrong narrative that I have, I need to check that, but I think, we got ourselves so much free time, right? The, one of the dream of modernity is like, we wouldn't have to slave ourselves and work as hard as, you know, during the industrial revolution and even before like slave ourselves so we can have time to have philosophical conversation and make art and sing song and be with our loved ones. But funny enough, like since then, we got a lot more free time. And what do we spend doing that? Watching Netflix and scrolling the internet and go shopping we're not we funny enough I think that maybe we have a lot more time available to us but yet we don't make more art we don't make more connection with those and it, it's uh it shows that modernity had something wrong in their analysis of the human uh, condition um but it, I think in that there's a uh with on that journey somehow there is a moment we got lost and we forgot the reverence for life which wasn't the origin of the first renaissance and modernity there was a lot of reverence to life there was a lot of connection to art philosophy politics and and the discovery of science was because we love life so much we wanted to understand it um and we wanted to que like questioning so that we could touch truth. But somehow in the in the, the path, we lost that sense of truth. We lost that sense of good, you know, because if they're truth and good, you're dominating people. Like, who are you to hold the truth? Who are you to be superior than other with your goodness? And and it lost, we lost our purpose. Because every human being deeply, deeply long for truth and for goodness and beauty. Yeah, that's really, yeah, that's really beautiful. It's like, um, it's so interesting how we engage in practices that take us really far away from such 
aspect. And everything I suppose can be calcified. Everything. So modernity has become a religion. The way capitalism was a religion that became calcified at some point. And like people don't think of modernity as a religion, but it utterly is. It's the water we mm. swim in. We don't even question it. And we don't see that it has calcified us and like we just take it for granted and don't question it anymore. Mm -hmm. Now there starts to be because it's where the reality, the realm of reality is starting to shake because that way of that cultural narrative is starting to break down. It's starting to have cracks. Um, so with that comes a great opportunity. Mm -hmm. And how do we, I suppose, then in a more practical sense, how do we start to allow ourselves to connect with our truth, our beauty, our goods, and start to express that in a in a world where we are filled with so many distractions and we probably encounter similar thoughts to you, like, I have to do this, I should do this, this better not be... Um, I better not prioritize this because it's not really worthy. How do we start to shift our narrative towards understanding the place that art can hold for us or creativity can hold for us? How do you shift that? Well, there's so many layers to it. Um, well, one, this is why there's also, it touches one of the reasons of the existence of life itself and intention of life itself. So you got to find your peers. It's very hard to go on to that quest to free yourself from your um, sh uh, schema in French, your uh, frames. I don't know how to say it, but it's very hard to free yourself by yourself. <laughs> Because you're not an individual, really. You are an individual, but you interbe with others. You exist in a culture. It's very hard to swim in the opposite direction than all your other peers. So you want to find your tribe, your little group that helps you continue to cultivate that. Um, and I also think one key thing is forgiveness. It's forgiveness and acceptance. Uh, because without forgiveness and acceptance, you cannot let the joy in. And often we don't forgive because we're afraid that if we forgive, we'd get hurt again. But then you punish yourself and you don't let yourself have joy. And so then you hurt again. So... I think that key element of forgiveness to oneself and to other is really important because letting the love of life in and whatever door that looks like the love of life, you know, and the different moment of life that looks different, but letting the joy of life in and finding what is the door to access the joy of life is really important and not in a narcissistic egocentric way because actually deep happiness for human being looks like contribution now we don't think sometimes that maybe making a great art piece is a contribution having a deep conversation with a friend is a contribution smiling to a foreign person and saying you're really pr beautiful is a contribution but our greatest contribution comes from our way of being a being that radiates and from that are the fruits are the fruits of our action from the way of being comes an action but not an action you can have a very an action but full of resentment and a closed face not going to contribute very much but it is, um, and, and for that being to radiate, it's also grounded in a joy of life and not a joy of life that is delusional because you can have like, oh, I'm just happy. I'm not looking, you know, but no, like the joy of life of like, wow, the beauty of human beings, the beauty of human beings, 
and the flower a rose has is a rose tree only beautiful when it blooms or is the rose tree also beautiful in the mist of winter still with all its thorns yeah thank you thank you really beautiful really poetic um yeah i feel like it's so like when you when you speak um, in this conversation it feels so grounded like even though what you're saying is artistic creative poetic beautiful it has that real grounded element which can sometimes be lost or we don't allow ourselves to trust in in relation to like art and creativity and when you were talking it was making me think that you know even when I make my cup of coffee in the morning I could do that in a way where this is an expression of my creativity it doesn't have to be like like an automatic step by step oh I'm going to do this and this and this you know that kind of and that comes back into what you were saying about like being present being mindful like seeing the beauty in very small things like how the coffee spills on the top of the surface and maybe the pattern it forms and allowing ourselves to connect with everything as it as it is and seeing the beauty in it as opposed to just what we have decided should be or is beautiful yeah and I'd like to add something is we have deprived ourselves from dreaming big since the fall and the horror of communism and capitalism and yet human beings have a deep need to have massive dreams because human beings are huge and we need a dream big enough to carry to go to carry our ego beyond little dreams don't carry us very far we need to dream big but when i say to dream big is not a big delusion is a dream big anchored in the humongous reality and the complex reality we're navigating in and i i think that's a really um it's a really in thing of like we then make ourselves smaller than we are we are massive human being you know yes there's stories of of the horrors that human beings are capable of. Absolutely, I do not deny that reality of human nature. Yet equally, human beings are capable to die for another human being, to die for a cause, an abstract cause. And there's something absolutely huge to that, you know? and it's very important to honor that dimension of the call for wanting to contribute in human being and to contribute to something massive to others. Um, I, I also think that's one dimension in life itself is to dare to dream big again and to not be scared of those big dreams. Mm. 